Today we're going to be in uh, First Peter, the first letter of Peter, but we'll be in chapter five. We have uh, gone through the whole uh, letters by Peter before, and today we're just going to do this one chapter and see what the Lord has for us this morning. So let's pray together before we jump into it. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege. We thank you that you're here already with us. We thank you for your presence. And as we read your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit will quicken our understanding. You will open our eyes to see more clearly and that which we ought to receive, that our hearts will receive it gladly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a conclusion of the first episode that he's uh, writing. And he's going to give some instruction, exhortation, and also some hopeful uh, principles for us this morning. So let's uh, jump right into it. It says in verses 1, the elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow uh, elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not, as, not by compulsion, but willingly not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders, Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exhort you in due time, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, he will perfect, establish, and strengthen and settle you. And to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is a wonderful exhortation that we have this morning from uh, the Apostle Peter, the one who walked very closely with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amongst the three who were very close, he was amongst them. And we know that he was the, the one who always talked a lot. You know, he, he, he voiced his opinion every time. He was opinionated. <laughs> um, he would try to advise Jesus sometimes on what to do. Um, but we also saw that when Jesus was taken by night uh, to be questioned, Jesus had told him that you who said, you know, I'll protect you with my life, you will deny me three times before the cock crows. And when that happened, he was broken. He thought about what the Lord Jesus said to him and it got into his heart and he was very remorseful about it. So as he's writing here, first of all writing to the elders, 
uh, not making himself to be the greatest. Because, you know, most of the time when the apostles are mentioned or um, he, his name is always the first. So other people have thought, oh, he's, uh, he's the first pope, he's the whatever. Uh, that is not the case. He's a, he's a humble man. Uh, he says here, uh, writing to the elders, I whom am a fellow uh, elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. So as he's addressing the elders, he's not taking himself apart and say, well, you know, this is instruction for you, this is not for me. He wants to speak something that he's experienced and what he's willing to do with other fellow believers, with other fellow elders, um, with other mature men who are um, taking care of God's flock. He says that he's, ex he's witnessed the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has done that firsthand. He's, he's experienced, he's seen it with our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we talk about suffering, it's not just him penning some things, just writing things for the sake of writing. These are the things he's seen with his eyes firsthand. He knows it. And he's writing to these elders in a way of reminding them because all these things that our Lord Jesus Christ went through, we are bound to go through. I mean, none of us here would say, you know, I've never gone through suffering. Maybe you're a special case. But I believe every one of us, in one way or another, we've gone through suffering. We've gone through heartaches. We've gone through horrible situations. And maybe we are going through them even right now. These things are happening in our lives every day. So when you hear it from someone who has gone through it, then you feel encouraged and you know, ah, I'm not alone. He's going to mention that the things that we go through, our brotherhood in the world, they are going through the same. So whatever the least, you know, that you have, you can write down all the pain, all the suffering, list them, and then after you're done, you pass it to the rest of the eight billion people. <laughs> like, voila, I'm not alone. All these people are going through them, right? If we were to write our story here, the way we are, a cover chapel, I give you a piece of paper to write your story. We're gonna have to discuss them for the next nine years. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot, a lot of painful stuff, a lot of things that we've gone through, but yet he's still given us strength to be here today. So he say, I have, I'm a witness of the sufferings of Christ. And apart from that, apart from this suffering, there's one thing that to be um, hoped for. That is the glory that will be revealed. Because you know, as we, we suffer sometimes, or you know, the, the, the enemy tries to, to, to bring things to, to block us, not to see really what is ahead of us. The glory that will be revealed to us when we have fought a good fight of faith and we are before the Lord. Oh, it will be beautiful. It will be wonderful. You, you, the, the, the pain that you did go through, you, th there will be so little as compared to the greatness of us being in the presence of the Almighty God. And so that is what to, to look for. So I'm also a partaker of the glory that is to be revealed. There is something to look for. There is something that is happening right now. Maybe we are serving people. We are going through a lot of suffering, but there's a glory that comes at the end of the day. So your labor in the Lord is never in vain. The Lord is putting it into account. 
And he goes on to say, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being example to the flock. That is our subject today, being examples to God's people. Being an example. What does it mean to be an example? Is to emulate, is to copy. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter five, to imitate Christ, be ye imitators of Christ. If Christ be our example, do you know how he lived? Do you know how he behaved? Do you know how he walked with people? How he treated people? How his life was here on earth? We know it because we've read it in the Bible. The Bible clearly tells us that no temptation that we go through, there's none that Jesus didn't go through. All the things that we are going through. He went through all of them, yet without sin. If he be our example, then we can follow the right direction and just be Christians. Just do what the Bible tells us to do. But here, this warning is very uh, straightforward, especially to the elders and to the shepherds who are taking care of God's people. First of all, he says, um, serve not by compulsion, but you do it willingly. No one is going to start forcing you to do things, pulling you over like, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? No, no, no. We ain't going to do that. That will be very frustrated. You know, sometimes you can call on people to do things. They would do them because a, a, a person in authority has called them to do. But is it really what they want to do? As shepherds, we are called to feed the flock and to warn the flock. To feed the flock and to warn the flock. As you're feeding the flock, make sure you're not taking advantage of God's flock, or God's people. Requiring other things before you would engage, before you would pray for people, before you would give counsel to them, before you would just interact with them. We have seen, and we know it, both here in this town and in all over the country and really all over the world, that there are men that you cannot get close to. They're the, the, the supermen of God. You can never come close to them. You don't even know their body order. <laughs> you, you, even just a handshake is a problem. Why? Because when, when the service is ended, we have the security <laughs> lining here so that they will, they will slide him before, with that door. But that's not why we made that door. <laughs> so they will slide and get away from you people. Why, why are they running away from people? Before you go to their offices or just come for counsel and prayer, they have the PO. You guys know it. Those who have been around this town, the prophetic offering. You guys know it? You guys don't know? If you don't have that envelope with something inside, he will not pray for you. He will not give you counsel. And even when you're booking an appointment to come, they want to know, you know, what, what is your status in life? Where are you? You drive? 
or you sit closer to the driver as you come to church. <laughs> Where are you? Where you, well, you're serving people, but you do what the Bible says here. You have dishonest gains. You want to take advantage of God's flock. Instead of serving them, you just want them to serve you, to pour into you, to give you, to give you. It's a pyramid scheme. You guys know it, the pyramid scheme. He's always at the top, and the rest of us at the bottom. We are the ones selling our shambas, but we are never at the top. It's a trick. In fact, you don't need to be very spiritual to know that it's a trick. It's just plain lies. Do we see that in the Bible? Do we see Jesus telling people, hey, before you come for counsel, bring 10 denarius. Before you come and ask Jesus, hey, well, what can I do? He's like, oh, what you gotta do? Book an appointment next week on Thursday. Man, you, you don't have food right now. <laughs> you're, you're about dead right now, and he's telling you to come next week that is not a shepherd that is a hireling a person who does not care about the flock of God not by compulsion but willingly not for dishonest gain but eagerly not as being lords over those who are entrusted to you but being examples to the flock not being lords, they're being bosses, you know, just ordering people around. You, you never work, your hands are never dirty, doing things for the church to bless people. Pick it from the man who has walked with Christ physically, and he knows and say, hey, you do that, you're a hireling, by the way. You're not real. Because there's danger that comes at the end of the day. There's good news for those who would hold on, those who would do their own things. It says here, and when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. If you do what is right, if you follow Jesus and serve his people, serve the flock of God, minister to them. You know, sometimes... So, the flock, they can be something else. One, one of the sheep runs towards the ditch. The rest of the sheep, where? <laughs> they follow suit. You guys have seen that. At least those who have been shepherds, those who have hung around sheep. Sometimes we don't like sheep, right? They don't smell good. And as a shepherd, and you know, we read this in the Old Testament, this shepherd, they used to go ahead and the sheep will follow. That's why Jesus said that my sheep knows my voice when I call. They come right back. They know the great shepherd. And as we are given a responsibility of shepherding God's people, what are we doing with them? If we find one wounded, are we going to carry it on our shoulder to go nurse the wound? Or we're going to say, this is going to waste our time, so let's just kill it for some meat, and then we continue with life. What are you going to do? You're going to take advantage of the ship, or you're going to bless the flock of God. It is a great responsibility, let me tell you. But there is a dreadful thing. If you don't do that, the chief shepherd will appear. Not long, he will appear with the rewards in his hands. <laughs> I don't know which one you receive. Because also remember, as he's coming with the reward for those who served faithfully, this other hand, there is wrath for the children of disobedience. Where are you going to be? Because there's no middle ground. It's either you're serving the Lord 
or you ain't serving. And he's going to talk about our heart's attitudes because that speaks a lot. So likewise, you younger people, younger people, submit yourself to your elders. And these are elders whom you have verified for sure that they walk with the Lord, that you've seen the fruit of the Spirit in them, not just any elder, but those who have proven themselves. Submit yourself to these elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another also, and be clothed with humility. Before we finish that verse, it's talking to the younger people. Submitting to the elders, submitting yourself to one another, and to be clothed with humility. He says this because he knows younger people are very prideful. We think we know it all. We got things figured out. All the issues of life, we got them figured out. Blessed are you if you have things figured out. I'm still figuring myself out. <laughs> I don't know me. Have you ever done something and you, you actually surprised yourself? <laughs> like, wow, that was me. <laughs> like, that was rude. <laughs> I've done those things, many of them. I gotta fight with myself every day. He writes to the young people and says, hey, be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You guys won't be resisted by God. (laughs) He's gonna block you, you can't move. I mean, you you think about it. This earth is his too. So when he wants to resist you, what does it take? An ounce of a breath or what? It's no big deal for him. But you're going to hurt big time if you let that happen. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. You know, humbling yourself before God means you accept God's purposes for your life and stop trying to design your own life with your timeline and your agendas because we have a lot of them, right? We have our timeline when we want things done. We have our own agendas that we bring before him. But are we keeping what God has spoken to us or his purposes for our lives? You know, you don't don't make demands of God, but rather you talk with God through humble submission. God knows perfectly how to guide, protect, and empower you to experience an abundant life with him. But God also invites you into a relationship with him to talk about everything. He welcomes you to, to talk about everything. You know, there's not a point where you say, ah, you... You, you, you talk too much. <laughs> you go aside. You talk too much. You have a lot of needs. You have a... No, no, no. What, what kind of a relationship do we have with our Heavenly Father? When you think or act like you know best instead of God, you show your pride. And often it will come with demands. You're making demands. God, I want this now. Do this now. 
now, now. It's now, now, now. Friends, do you think that is how it works? God knows you from the end, from the beginning to the end. There's nothing that he misses about you. There's nothing that goes and say, oh, that was a surprise. There's no surprises. He knows everything about you. And so when we want to make demands, you know, what, what would be our attitudes when we're doing that? Pride puts you in opposition to God. Humility positions you to be a recipient of God's grace. To which one do you choose? It's like, no, I want to be a recipient, but I still want to keep my pride a little bit. Because the, the one of the things that maybe you guys don't struggle with that is my struggle. I got to put my body, my whole self, into subjection of God's word. Beating myself daily. Otherwise, if I don't, you guys don't know me too well. You don't. Just apart from God's word, I'm the prideful prick you guys have ever seen in this world. Can I show you? <laughs> I, I know it. The Lord has been so gracious to me. He's, he's taught me a lot of things and I'm still learning. The moment you, you stop and think now you've gotten things figured out, that's your downfall. That's when you go down the drain. You think you have things figured out. You know how to work things out. No, no, no. Paul tells us actually to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Pride kills many people. Not just people out there. People within the church. Pride puts you in opposition to God, while humility positioned you to be a re recipient of God's grace. Grace is God's favor towards you that you do not earn or deserve. It is unmerited. Studying through the Bible, we see you know, many of the writers of the Bible really, but three of them very outstanding. That is Solomon, James, and Peter. God spoke to these men and they wrote about, you know, humility and pride. Solomon, the son of David, is considered the wisest man to ever live on planet Earth. But you know what he says? Hey, humble yourself. In other words, saying, I've been prideful, my friend. <laughs> I know where this thing will take you. I've been there. Humble yourself. The other guy is James. James is the half-brother of Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary, who became the leader of the church in Jerusalem after... Uh, the death of Jesus and resurrection and ascension. He speaks about it, about pride. And you know, he adds other aspects when he's writing the book of James. The tongue. Why is he writing about the tongue? You guys know he lived with Jesus, right? He might have said a lot of foolish things, a lot of silly things against God. <laughs> Bro, you don't get it. He might have said a lot of things. And then after he got really born again, and he's reflecting upon his life and what he said, like, oh, 
Jesus is gracious. <laughs> he is very gracious to me. I said a lot of dumb things. I said a lot of silly things. He, he didn't destroy me. In fact, he, he never introduces himself like, hey, I am James, by the way, the brother of King Jesus. <laughs> so that people would think highly of him. No, he's a very humble guy. He doesn't go that route. As opposed to us, if the governor is your distant cousin, <laughs> oh, we're going to get it. We're going to, do you, you know who I am? <laughs> no, David said, that I remember that I'm just bust dust. <laughs> that is who you are. You, you're saved by grace. That is who you are. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The other guy that speaks about it is Peter, the disciple of Jesus, one of the three closest disciples who led the followers during the time of uh, Pentecost. He knows about just speaking. Hey, he told Jesus, I'll protect you. He took the sword and slice someone's ear. Jesus told him, if, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by it. Relax. You know, some of us think, you know, humility is going slowly. <laughs> Bra brother, bro bonus if you will. Hallelujah. Changing your voice. Just be normal. I beg you, be normal. Just interact with people how you do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, bonus if you will. <laughs> Glory. Karika jina la yesu. Shetani ya shindwe. ridiculous. It's funny. You guys can laugh about it because it's funny. We're just normal human beings. We ought to live a normal life as Christians. Just be a Christian. That's all. Jesus said, you love one another, the world will know that you are my disciple. That's all is needed. Don't try to change things so that people will accept you, so that actually you will gain from people. You know, some people think, you know, there's there's, there's much anointing when you change your voice. Right? Do you, do you go to the grocery store and change your voice? Um, can you give me a soda? <laughs> if it's my shop, I'll get it. Just get out of here, man. I, I'm not going to sell it to you. It's annoying, right? Th that is not humility. That is not humility. In fact, that is pride. You're trying to hide things. Just be you. Just talk normally the way we talk, right? Um, don't, don't like how. I've, I've always humbled myself. <laughs> no. If you hear someone say like that, you just know. We have you. We know where you are. Just, just lead a normal life. It's going to be all good. Therefore, humble yourself. Don't, don't wait for God to resist you because that is, that is going to be painful. You, you ain't going to like it. So as much as you're able, just try to be a Christian. Lead a normal life and people will know. You know the Bible says that Moses was the most humble man who ever lived. <laughs> you guys know that? He's the one who got mad and struck the, the rock. You guys remember? <laughs> He's the one who got mad and told God, I did not give back to these people. These are your own people. <laughs> Deal with them. 
I mean, he, he got mad many times. But you know, at the end of it, the Bible says what? He was the most humble guy. So humility is not in the voice. So when I'm tough, I might be humble. <laughs> you might have a very nice face, but very prideful. Don't, don't gauge it like that. Be, be spiritual minded. Then you'll be able to discern. From a distance over there, you see that and you know that that is not of God. That needs to be shut down. Amen? Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in what? When is the due time coming? When is it? Do you know it? Because we want everything now. We want everything now, now, now. He said he will, he will lift you in due time. It means he's given you a chance to practice Christianity. And then when you're headed toward the right direction, he's going to meet you right there. In due time, he will lift you. In due time, he will lift you. That is whose job? It's my job to humble myself. To put others before me. Oftentimes, they used to say it's not the case. They used to say that Kenyans are very patient. Right, my fellow Kenyans? Until you meet them on the road. Everyone wants to go over. Those who are driving. Do you know that it only takes like two or three seconds to let someone go and you can go? Did you know that? It's not complicated, right? But we just want to, we want to go, and then after we go, what do we do? We just want to stay in front of you. It's a queue, there's a food, there's, there's food. We want to cut line so that we are in the, it's like we take a lot of pressure when we see people where? Behind us. <laughs> whether it's food, whether it's in traffic, you know, the pedestrians, the zebra crossing, they just want to cross like forever. You have you seen people there quickly and then they, they come closer to the vehicle and they're like, huh? Now they're pole pole. It's like, so what, what's wrong with you? You have a brain tumor. And then they get there like, ha. Huh. You know, these things we have, the vehicles, they, they're man-made. Something can fail. It can fail. The brakes can fail. What you gonna do? We can pay you, but you will never be the same when we hit you. So just relax. There's a time, even though the car owners, like, no, you guys walk over there. <laughs> this is for. Everyone wants to go. We don't want to be there. But the Bible tells us what? Consider others before you. <laughs> we just want things. That's why every parent is a dream for every parent, for their children, for their child to be number one. Right? So you want your child to be number one, okay? What about mine? <laughs> Which number is good for my child? Maybe they're not number one in this. Side. They, they, they have strength in other things. But we want to, you know, it's, it's a plague in our heads, in our minds. It got to happen this way, this way, and this way. No, you just relax. Humble yourself, and in due time, I don't know, maybe my due time is not due yet. <laughs> All I got to do is just serve the Lord. 
just do what I got to do as I wait upon the Lord. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know about the next minute. I just want to serve the Lord. I just want to work it out with fear and trembling because apart from the Bible, I'm a prideful human being. What do I want to do? Just the Bible. Stick to the Bible. Be sober. No, verse 7. Cast, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares about you. So you, you guys have some cares? He cares about you. You have burdens? Cast them on him, for he does what? Say, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Come to me, I'll do what? I'll give you rest. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So that his, 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 his full-time job is to walk around, try to find people. What's your full-time job? Because for us, it like, so the devil is full-time trying to find people. As we think Christianity is, you know, hapakule, you know, today, yeah, and tomorrow I relax. You know, Christianity in temporary basis. <laughs> Three times a week. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. <laughs> the rest, you do your own thing. No, the enemy does not rest. He's restless, trying to find people who he will devour. But he says, resist him. How do you do that? By being steadfast in the faith that you have received, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. There's nothing that is new. You know, you're going through stuff like, maybe it's me, maybe. No, no, no. A lot of people are going through the same thing. The same challenges you have with your teenagers. Chinese are having it. The same challenges you have with your children, South Africans and Nigerians and America, everybody. It's, 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 it's not strange. People are going through it. So be encouraged. You know, sometimes you, you can watch your children, you try to train them, you see them being unruly, you're like, I'm the worst parent ever. <laughs> Just do your job. Training has never been easy. There are people you train, they give up. Some they'll hold on. So just keep on training them. Keep on doing it. Don't give up. As I call the worship team to come. But remember, that is the one greatest way to resist the enemy is to be steadfast in the faith. Stand firm. After standing, stand therefore, the Bible says. Just stand, always stand. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That is what he's, he's not telling you that you will go without suffering. Suffering will come. For a while. <laughs> you know how the span of for a while? You know what it means for a while? It's for a while. <laughs> it's for a period of time that is not known to us. But he knows it. Maybe you're right in there in that season. Suffering. 
Maybe you're going through a lot of things, a lot of heartaches, a lot of tribulations, a lot of things happening in your life. You don't know what to do. But be encouraged because the Lord knows. And he said after that has happened, for a little while, then he will perfect you. He will establish you. Every one of us, we want to be established in the Lord. We want to be settled in the Lord. And to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let us practice the Bible. Let us practice what we preach to people, right? We read God's word to people. Let us practice the same. You know, this man called St. Augustine. This is what he said about humility. He said that humility is the foundation of all other virtues. Hence, in the soul in which this virtue does not exist, there cannot be any other virtue except in mere appearance. i say that again. Humility is the foundation of all other virtues. Hence, in the soul in which this virtue does not exist there, cannot be any other virtue except mere appearance. In other words, if there's no humility, whatever you, we see that you're trying to do is just faking it. There's no fake it till we make it in Christianity. <laughs> we don't have it. If it's there, we, we're going to see it. There are people that you look at their lives and say, that man, that woman, for sure, they're humble. For sure, they're faithful to God. For sure, they're kind to people. For sure, they love people. But it's not just mere word. Christianity is a lifestyle, is what we live, what we do every day. You want to be great? Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And in due time, you know, I think those, those little phrases, they kind of, you know, run our brains mad, right? You say, like, whoa, what is the span? What is the length of due time? The Lord said, in due time. Until when? Before that happens, be steadfast. Hold on to Christ. He said in his word that he will be with us be with you until the end of time. What a marvelous promise to know that I'm not alone. He's with me. Every step I make, every move I make, I know that the Lord of hosts is with me. So don't give up. Maybe you're at the verge of giving up. Life is hard. Life is tough. And it's probably it's going to be tough even tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe next year it's still tough. I don't know. I cannot promise you good. I can only promise you that if you do right, God's presence will be with you. He said he will never forsake you, nor leave you. Paul, you know Paul, the apostle, he cried to the Lord not one time. He cried to the Lord the first time the Lord gave him a response that probably was not likable. <laughs> he did it again the second time. 
He did it again the, th the third time. And you know what the Lord Jesus said? I ain't gonna take it away, but you know what? I'm gonna help you carry it. You're not gonna bear it alone. You have a big load on your shoulder, he's gonna help you carry it. You know, when you get tired, he's gonna lift it up your shoulder. He's gonna lead you through. So keep trusting in the Lord. Don't give up. You know, sometimes people will come and ask me that, have you ever come to a point where, you know, you wanted to give up and leave the ministry? Yeah. <laughs> not one time, not two times, not even 10 times. Many times. But when you come back and see the glorious things that God has promised at the end of time, he said, no, no matter what comes, I want to say it like Paul. I don't know how it's going to go, but I want to say it like Paul, that none of these things move me. Chains and death, persecution and suffering, none of these things move me. If they want to move me, I want them to move me closer to God, not away from Him. Let us bow our heads as we pray together. Maybe you are in that season. You don't know how long it's going to take. Be encouraged. Know that the Lord is with you. God, we thank you. We bless you for all that you have done. We thank you that our lives are surrendered to you. We thank you that you have made a promise for us wonderfully, reminding us that you are with us always. And I pray for those who are here and they're discouraged. They are wondering about the next move. They are wondering how things are gonna turn to be. I pray that you console them. I pray that in your due time, you will establish them. You perfect them. Oh God, we are your people. Cry now to you this morning. Cry now for help. Holy Spirit, I pray that, I pray that you be poured upon us, even right now, that our eyes will be opened to see more clearly that we'll have discernment to know which road to go, which road not to take. Oh God, we surrender our lives to you. And I know many of us may be uh, struggling with prideful ideas in our hearts. Please help us. Please help us, God. Sometimes we think we are better than other people. We know them more than other people, so everyone is supposed to bow to us. Lord, help us, help our hearts to be drawn to you more and more. If be there anyone who needs salvation, I pray that you save them today. Restore them today. Be merciful to them, Lord. We thank you. And as we give... Um, our offering this morning, we pray that we'll, we'll give a percentage that is um, glorious, a percentage that is worth the Lord who died for us. So help us even as we give and bless the works of our hands. In Jesus' name we pray.